Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 134. Joining me this week, as always, the lovely Ian Gibson. Jeez, 134? That's two, almost, that's two and a half years ago. Will, what are we doing with our uh, lives, man? I'm still two and a, less than two and a half viewers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> uh, the audience couldn't hear it. Sorry, Jason is also here from Save Data. Yes, I am Joining here. Us. I made it. I, I'm here for the special reunion uh, episode for celebrating these two and a half viewers, actually. That's what they yep. called before. That's oh, what exactly you. you're here for. Uh, chocolate milk at the ready, I assume. Uh, I'm currently actually fucking drinking. Yes. It out of this class. yes. You know, I, so, I've, been, I've, been, I've been craving chocolate milk. I, I need to get some from the grocery store. So good. You do. Um, uh, sorry, train of thought. Uh, I was saying, Ian, you were doing your little miming before, uh, when I was introducing the show, and you were muted still, but I still heard your mouth noises, and it was disgusting. <laughs> it was absolutely awful. Do you want me to do, you want me to do it for the listener? No, uh, please. It was just a lot of like... Oh, oh, yeah, disgusting. it turns out turns out when, when you get a better microphone, it hears a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Too much. Way too much. Um, folks, we are here to talk about video games and talk about all sorts of things. But before we get to that, we like to chit-chat a little bit. Ooh, Ian has a quest marker above his head. Um, Ian, you have an idea in the chit-chat section, I believe. Yes. Uh, Wait, what, I what, have is what is this? Jeez. On the stream, there's a there's a little exclamation above Wow, me. that's so good! Yeah. Whoa! Don't know why. He's excited. Rando uh always uh so i recently booked a trip i'll drop it here because nobody's watching uh we will be shooting a pixelate episode at retro world expo in hartford connecticut in two weeks uh very excited for it but i will be traveling for it um and i'm gonna have a decent amount of like airport airplane time and i've decided to bring my retroid pocket flip three and folks i need from you guys what do you feel like are the must-play games up through including the PS1 era? Because I'm I'm ready to play some retro titles. Uh, a lot of them I have not played. So what, give me some rapid fire. What's some good trip Hit. games, etc.? Okay. Um, I know people are gonna. Are you so you said up to like PS1, including PS1? Yeah, up okay. to and including. Uh, I have one. But you're not going to be your pro Let me ask you this. Can you access, like, ROMs and stuff? I assume that's how you're playing them, right? Like, uh, No, I'm carrying, like, <laughs> a 3,000-pound suitcase with me. Oh, it has know. all the games. Hey, I have access I, I, to all of the games. Yes. I didn't know if you had a Steam. Yeah, Physically. Okay. Um, yes, legally. Right, because, you know, uh, that's how it goes. Because um, people are obviously going to give you all these, like, RPGs, like, the classic RPGs. Like, like I assume people are going to give you, like, Chrono Trigger. I was Final thinking Fantasy. about that. I've never played it. Yeah. Um, Chrono Trigger's short is what I've heard, too. Um, it's on the uh, list. Never yeah. finished it. It's I can actually, tell there's one on your mind, though. There's yeah, one on your mind. There is, but I, I'm kind of like a loser for suggesting it. Uh, is it porn? Of, no. <laughs> it's, 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 I, because I don't want to always be that, I don't want to be that Fire Emblem guy, but they made, uh, oh. that's why. So I, I will tell you, I did try to play Sacred Stones, Which one? right? I did. I did try to play Sacred Stones. It's a. It's too old for me because okay, my first was Awakening, and I couldn't. I. I probably can't play prior than Awakening. Right. That's the so problem. There you go. Because my my suggestion was going to be. I think this is legitimately. It should be competing. This game should be competing for Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger as the best RPG of that era. Uh, but since it was mm -hmm. only released in Japan, it doesn't have that luxury. It's like kind of like um Mother, Mother and Earthbound. Like they would be better oh, games if they were released. I've never played them. I would yeah. recommend those too. But Mother Three, you can probably play. It's the one with Lucas. Um, it's kind of a messed mm -hmm. up game, but uh, those games are so good. But like this, 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 this Fire Emblem, which is FE Four, has the, probably the best narrative out of all of them. But again, it's mm -hmm. it should be pushing for best RPG of that era. But again, only released in Japan, so that hurts gotcha. a lot. Gotcha. Yeah, Chrono Trigger is probably the one I would suggest if you're not going to play that, and it's a good RPG and it's short. It's bite size for a nice. JRPG. So that sounds perfect. Will, what about you? You got any recs? 
Uh, you know, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I'm trying to limit it because, like, this isn't necessarily something you're going to come home from your trip and continue playing. Um, Probably not. Yeah. So I was thinking, I mean, if you want to dip your toes in some Alundra 2, uh, you could check that out. Uh, it's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was just trying to think of, like, fun Super Nintendo games. And there's that Picross, Super Mario Picross. That's pretty good. Ooh. There's a lot. Uh, which I think is actually on the, um, I think it's on the Switch now, so you could play Super it there. Um, I was thinking about playing then, um, the GBA Mario Kart, which yeah, I always heard great but things is that, about. Isn't that newer than a PlayStation 1? Because PlayStation uh, 1 was before the GBA. I, I, mean, I mean, technically, yes, but I'm like technologically, okay. I can totally play GBA games. Um, yeah. Uh, if GBA, I was thinking you could try the Mega Man Battle Network that Chris was talking about last week. No, fuck that. Oh, okay. you could. <laughs> Sorry, I just know that's not for me. <laughs> you could no, do. Uh, you could do like a Donkey Kong Country kind of game too. Oh, Donkey Kong Country! Ooh. I only Those played two. Diddy's Conquest. I, oh. I love two. It has the best music in the. It has probably one of some of the best music in the series, like the series, and probably really good. It's. Is it's that what it's called? Two it's like is Donkey Diddy's Kong Quest. It's, it's, Diggy, it's Diddy's Quest, I think. Yeah. Kong Quest. My bad, man. Come it's on. A joke. That's pretty good. Like Kong Quest. That's pretty good. It's good. Oh, that's that's pretty, pretty good. That was, you know what? That was something. I love that. I do have... Um, I'm about a, a third of the way through... A third to a half of the way through Advance Wars 2, so I may just pick that save really? up there. Did you, play on, yeah. did you play the Advance Wars on the GBA, or is it the Switch one? Oh, it's 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 the GBA one, and I, I skipped Advance Wars one because everybody says two is much better. So I'm I'm like twelve missions into two. Uh, I put it down a couple months ago. I think two is definitely more popular. I as somebody who plays and loves the series, uh, it's debatable which mm -hmm. one I think is better actually. For me, you know, oh, okay. <clears throat> I hate. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this, and you're not gonna play it. You but can't say I'm... that word, Will. <laughs> yeah, that, folks, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> For the what? second time. Um, no. <laughs> um, because I want to play one, uh, which is the Pokemon game. Uh, I was thinking, but that's I still think that's too much. I'm, I'm trying to th keep them narrow for you. Like, I, I think I thought RPGs about it. are too much. Yeah. I thought about it, but I'm, I'm just not in the mood for a Pokemon. What right about now. Metroid? Super Metroid? Ooh. Ooh. Fuck, that's a good one. That's going on the list. GBA, that's GBA going Metroids. Or, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Fusion. Like Fusion. Fusion. Fusion's good. Yeah. Okay. I think I've got a healthy list here. Um, Thank you, now, boys. You're welcome. Now that we're picking uh, Jason's brain, Jason, I have been trying huh? for weeks. I mean, I don't necessarily need this now because I have Baldur's Gate, but I've been I've been trying to find my next tactical game, like RPG. Okay. I tried Valkyria Chronicles one and four, okay. and I hated them so much. What, uh, what didn't you like about them? Real quick. Doesn't have to be too far. They were the so hardest no. video games I've ever tried to play. Well, <laughs> I, you... I literally... Well, if you played it... like I, I don't want to say play it in front of me. There, those games, like, once you figure out the like real way to play those games, they're much easier. That's 100%. But it was just like, you're just always being... Sh like, the act of always being shot at and like my yes. characters were always yes. dying was yes. so frustrating. Mm -hmm. Also, scouts um, are OP. The scouts are just completely broken. Um, yeah, I, I could see myself learning to like it, but I just was like, no, this fair. isn't for me. I love I love them, but um, I tried Tactics Ogre Reborn. Um, did not like that game. I did not like that. Um, they also did the gross pixel smoothing thing for the remaster, yeah. and I hate when video games do that. Oh, it always looks so gross. Um, yeah. I tried. Listen, uh, Will, please shut the fuck up. It's time for Mario Plus Rabbits. It's fucking time. It's a great turn-based game. Yeah, that's I good, know. too. It's I already time. had your it's recommendation. Time. I wanted no, Jason's recommendation. Well, that's, that's a good game. Have you played... Did you play Triangle Strategy? No. So Triangle Strategy is on the list. I tried Final Fantasy Tactics. I didn't. wasn't that a big fan of it. There. Well, um, that's close. Final Fantasy Tactics is... I don't want to say similar to uh, Ogre Tactics were born, because people are going to be like, It was more oh, the, not. the fact the way the camera worked and stuff. Yeah. Um, I... Triangle Strategy, you can play a demo, I think. Still, the demo might be available, which you can try out. Although the story is really long in the demo, so you can only play a couple missions. But I love the gameplay in that. Um, okay. But again, it, it's it's really front-loaded on story. So like, it feels like you're playing 
not much gameplay and there's a lot of story they drop in so that's the only, only problem with that game but i love that game it was my game of the year that year for that year it came out which was 2021 or 22 i don't know oh, was it that recent project triangle oh it was it was damn, damn. yeah i think okay, you're right I, like I wrote both of those down i will uh I'll try them out. I'm trying, when to, think, I get I'm to, trying to think. I played. Oh, yeah. Weird one off the wall. I played. Did you ever play Gears of War? Yes. The Gears of War the tactics Funko game. One? The Funko one. Is it Funko Gears Pop? Pop? <laughs> I did not play that one. No. But I played Gears. There's a there's a tactics game for Gears of War, which wasn't bad actually. I liked it. Hmm. That's another one I would like kind of like throw in like an off meta pick. Uh, it was actually pretty good. If you played Gears and you're like. The tactics that they put in for gears, like you can pick up like weapons, kind of like boom shots and like torque bows, so like you can in the games mm -hmm. for like your soldier and use them like for like one shot or two shot. It was pretty fun. Okay, what was cool. That? cool, cool. Um, I will check those out. Thank you for your brain for everyone. Oh, yeah. Triangle strategy is echo. front loaded. Just just know it's front loaded. I promise it's worth, but it's really long at the beginning. Okay, that's why. I would suggest the demo if you're gonna. And get the, it. the demo bleeds into the main game, like you can. If you the play game. the demo, I think you can continue your save too if you like it. I Perfect. think. I like when video games do that. It's very handy. Yes. It um, does do that, yeah. yeah. I think that's all of it. Okay, cool. Uh, moving on, let's head over into the games we have been playing section of this here podcast, uh, and let's start with Jason because I genuinely would like to know what this. Um, the video game is the, the Rainbow Detective. Uh, I think it's only for the Switch because that's why I tried to fill it out their sheet. The Subpixel Boys came out with a sheet, guys, that reevaluate your evaluate your exes, your family history, your blood type, and then your gaming history as well. It was a very thorough <laughs> sheet. I filled it out. I felt dirty. Your sperm uh, count's like a little game. low, but I think we can yeah, get my that up. sperm count is very low. The two boys are not swinging very well. They're kind of dying, but you know they're trying their best. <laughs> I'll get them some oh, fucking. I'll, I'll get oh. them some, some. Get them some fucking. Some, some pool noodles so they can get going. Uh, listen, this, this raincoat detective game is. It's made by the guy who made um, Danganronpa's. So I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but they're like anime. Is, okay, Danganronpa is that the one that's very similar to the Nine 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 series? Yes, it's those games. They all okay. have like a bleed through kind of like feel to them, like anime, kind of like. This character's got some kind of thing for him or like some kind of design, like anime design and like some power yeah. or something about them. Like, you know, they they have that kind of feel. I think it's I'm trying to remember the guy who makes it. It's uh, I should know it. Dang. Dan. Dan. Yeah, of course. Dan Goodropa. <laughs> Dan. Uh, but yeah, the Danganronpa series is like 16 kids going to school. And they have superpowers or something like that. This guy's like the best baseball player. And then they eventually kill uh -huh. each other off. This game, sort of similar in terms of they have like you're with a detective agency and you have like they, they, the detectives have like fortes or special powers that they can use to help them solve crimes. Like we just got this person who looks at a crime scene. If you like if they're at a crime scene, they know exactly what the crime scene looked like before it was like tampered with. Uh, and messed around with as the crime gotcha. like, first happened. So that's like their power. One person, like, they know they uh, can feel like the pulse of like everybody in like a 60 like foot area and know if somebody's like moving around or alive in that area. Oh, okay. So, like, stuff like if somebody's like trying to like, hide or something like that, that's like their power. That makes um, sense. They just that's know a good it. way to use it. Right. So they have like these kind of special powers and they use to solve these murder mysteries or whatever. Murder mysteries get really elaborate, and where it gets really uh, anime-ish is to solve them, you get pulled in by your ghost. She turns into a dominatrix, essentially. Pretty close to it. Puts you into this, mm -hmm. like, uh... I know Will is looking at this. She puts you into this, like, maze it's called, a, like, a labyrinth or whatever, and you solve the crime through, like, doing these, like, basically Persona-esque, like, mini-games and boss fights. Um, like, you'll, like, dodge these letters and use, like, this... You'll be collecting evidence, and you, like, use this evidence to, like, strike at him. Like, this is the right statement, and you have to, like, connect mm. it with a, the actual, like, when it's supposed to be used. Um, okay. So it's got very, like, anime flavor to it, very unique designs and character, intro, like, <laughs> like, 
very horny, which is unfortunate sometimes, but um, if you're that's your own, that it's kind anime. Of thing, yeah, it's it's real. It goes above and beyond, but it's <laughs> it's character designs are kind of nuts with it. Uh, I like solving the murder <laughs> mysteries, but if you don't like that DR kind of feel, which kind of makes you a little uncomfortable and takes you outside of your comfort zone, it, it, like it, they, sometimes they just make choices that are just really weird. Like you don't need to like have her like suck out. She sucks like she pulls out of her like chest or like barfs out of her like like the the solution answers. Like they're called solution keys. She barfs them up. And I'm like that's I'm sure that's a fetish for somebody somewhere where she barfs that up in front yeah, of you. someone else. It's like a rainbow barf. She like barfs it up. Not like, me. Jesus yeah. Christ. But like these games are. I'm not into that. I yeah. like them. Someone else. But they're, typ they're typically like 40 hour like visual novel book kind of like things like solving. They have yeah. a little gameplay on the side, but for the most part, they're kind of like visual novels. So is it um, so what I remember playing the nine 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 series yeah. is um, when you get to a room, it's kind of a combination of like point and click and escape room inside mm -hmm. the room inside the case. Is it like that? with this game like what's the actual gameplay mechanic when you're inside uh, the case well when you're solving the things it is like just point and click a lot of time like there's like the battles gotcha. inside the dungeon uh which we've only done like oh. one so which are like persona battles but when you're walking around trying to like pick up the stuff for the normal case you're just like pointing and clicking like oh gotcha. there's like we haven't okay. talked about this and then oh this guy is it's a locked room mystery like i wonder how he did it. and you would like click and like find all the things first and gotcha gotcha mm -hmm. okay so that makes sense it's visual novel and then it gets becomes like more persona-esque once you get into actual detective stuff or gotcha case. so it is it, it's definitely heavy on dialogue heavy on just like sitting there kind of just like watching and reacting and stuff rather than actually playing a game a lot of times which is good and bad i mean some people like those kind of games where it's more narrative and follow along rather than actually playing and you can just chill and kind of like you know don't have to like really feel like you're playing a game it's like watching a you know movie or something like that yeah they mm -hmm. made an anime off dying rampa for example it's not great but there isn't like an anime like an actual anime off of it for example it's not it's not good but that's the kind of <laughs> stuff like if you if you were to watch it you could you could probably make it you could you could make it yeah you know the 999 series would make a fantastic anime because I Okay. I love those games, but the only kind of problem I had was when it got into story mode, it was very interesting, but it was literally like 15 minutes of sitting there going through dialogue mm -hmm. and it was very interesting, but I almost think it would be fantastic as a series. It's, well, the, my think so 999 is very similar, but it has a major fall for 999 to get all the stories. You play like one side of the tree and then like you yeah. don't know the other like what happened if you didn't go door left. Like if you go to yep. the right side, you group meet up with I don't know how many other like clients, like 3. So you have like th yeah. two three different stories and like different game endings and like if since it's on the DS, they didn't have those systems like go back and like pick that spot and reload and like get that story. Yep. So they have like seven different endings for 999. So I like 999 a lot. And then the second one and third one have some character problems is what I've heard. Uh, Zach always mentions them. You, haven't, has, played, you haven't played the, the second one and the third well, one? Well, the second one I, I don't want to play because I actually know the, I, I know the final twist of the entire like series, which is also rough. Uh, I'm not going to say it, but like, it's, it's, it's it's definitely one of those where it's like it, it, yeah. it would kind of suck knowing that, but there's so much going on. So I, I played the first one and the second one just back to back i fucking ripped through those things and i think i actually like the second one better than the first That's one fair. mostly because of because of what you say they make it much easier to hop around the tree and yep. and redo stuff um the third one i kind of bounced off about halfway through the, it the, the third one i've heard is so legitimately bad two is it makes really character good. choices are kind of interesting I, I don't like what they did with clover for example but it is yeah it that, is. that's fair yeah, but great games. I, I have no idea what you guys are talking about, but you should nine, play. You should <laughs> nine 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 is actually a, you should try too. Like that's another yeah, one I would and, recommend. But and they have newer versions. They got mobile versions that I believe do let you hop around the tree. So or you just do the ROM and good. save it. You just save the hack. Yeah, that's true. Sorry for promoting ROMs on your channel, but I mean that's the easiest <laughs> way to do it. Wow, how really dare you? It. How dare you? We only yeah. promote legitimately ripped roms jason you got something on here that just says quote other various hard modes i want to know about the hardest hard mode that you're playing right now tell me how hard 
Well, you are. It's, I mean, I always have like Slay the Spire, and I'm trying to get like Ascension 20 with all of those guys. That's always oh, yeah, that's hard. That's, that's hard. Yeah, that's that's a lot. I always do like FE Fire Emblem and just some challenges like constantly on my channel. They're not like new games. I played. Uh, no, it's not. What's it called? Jesus Christ. Uh, Darkest Dungeon. Game? Darkest Dungeon. And I beat this. I beat the. Yeah. Like I beat it on Stygian, which is like you can only have so many deaths in it. Stygian? Stuff like that. Stygian. Yeah. Sorry. Stygian. I call it um, Stygian. Question, Jason. What was that extremely hard game that you came on here once? And you said you had just started the game on very hard and you were spending like 40 hours trying to be or it was like level 40. That was, that was it. That was it. That was that? Yeah. I thought it was some other game. That was Darkest Dungeon Stygian? Yeah, Darkest Dungeon it has like a mode called Stygian, yeah. Which is oh, what maybe you it was that. I was game. thinking it was some other game, like new game that you had never played. But maybe You only have like 80 weeks to beat it. <laughs> For example, Yikes. oh, which which is man. eighty damn like eighty scenarios. That's like yeah. two years, right? Less than two years. Yeah. How's math so, work? It, I mean, that's another game I'd recommend. Darkest Dungeon, but I, I just do various games like where you just play the hard mode. And I, I it's something like I like gotcha. doing is playing on the hardest mode, or doing like ridiculous challenges or something like that, just to play to get like the maximum like you can pull from a game. Like even in Pokemon Stadium too, when I play it like. Playing that with only using the pool of like, you, you can't input your own Pokemon. Mm -hmm. You use the ones they give you, uh, the rentees. That's really hard, actually. Um, the mm -hmm. speed runs for that game are twenty four, like like eighteen hours. Jeez, they're That's really it's really hard. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I get that urge, I just punch myself in the balls, and then I don't have to play hard mode. It's uh, I it was, yeah. Woof. I could not do that to myself willingly. <laughs> it was it was more of a concept. Like I when I played Triangle Strategy, I jumped immediately into hard mode. Was it a mistake? Maybe, <sighs> but it felt like I was doing like the game at the highest. Yeah, I feel I like my fear is always if I'm starting a new game, I don't want to start it hard because I don't necessarily trust the devs to make the hard mode fair. And I'll, I'll give you an example. I remember one time I was at a land cafe in college with some friends and we were like, what should we play? And we were like, let's play Call of Duty World at War and we'll play it at the highest difficulty. And that game's fucking broken because it was literally as soon as you poked your head out of cover, snipers, you would get would you, you would yeah. get a headshot. Yeah. And they're yeah. constantly throwing grenades at you. So it was a hard mode where the game was just broken. So it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't want to do the hard mode because I don't trust the devs not to just be assholes about it. Fair. Yeah. I mean, but, it's the same. You, you've been playing Advance Wars. The hard modes for those are really fucking hard. So yeah, yeah. So I I, I appreciate the hustle. It ain't for me though. I'm a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are the games I've been playing mostly. Thank you, Jason. That's exciting. Uh, I want to check out that raincoat detective, and I'll check out what was it nine 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 nine. Uh, yeah, like I said, Darkest Dungeons another like art like it's it's a fun base building. I think you boys would like like it, but I don't know how much. I wasn't I wasn't super into it, but I know Will's yeah. been wanting to try it. Right? It's like a bait. Yeah, you build you build bases and go on like that's like a ta it's not I don't know if it's tactics or not. Would you call it? It's, no, it's weird because it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a grid. It's more but, it's it's closer to like a turn based RPG. Yeah, so. but it straddles it a bit. It straddles. Yeah, yeah. but that's some base building mechanics and stuff to it, too. So. Sweet. That's nine 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 is different from ninety nine nights, right? Yes. yes. Okay, those are two different. I'm just making sure. I just didn't want to end up playing. You've never up. heard of 999. I'm surprised. Before. No, That's... I mean it looks like it's 666 upside down, so it's probably satanic a little bit. That's what I You know, heard. it does have some dark themes in it. You know. Um, speaking yeah. of Satan, <clears throat> Baldur's Gate Three is here, folks. Um, put it up there with alcoholism and drug addiction because Baldur's Gate 3 is the devil's work. Uh it is the third game. It's the third game of the Baldur's Gate series. Uh well, well yeah, I guess it is. Um I'm just trying to think of like Icewind Dale and everything that kind of also count um it is a fantastic video game from larian uh out for the pc on steam uh coming to consoles later in the year i believe um i think it's like a month or two away i actually i think it launches on ps5 like the same week as starfield i believe yeah 
Um, I have been playing it a bunch. I think I have like 30-ish hours in it, Ian. Last time I checked, you had about 18. Um, uh, yeah, I think take about an hour off that because I did leave it running once, but yes. Okay. Uh, most, che cheater. I think everyone on my friends list who's been playing it has over 15 hours. One of my friends has 50 hours in it. Josh, I don't know how you do it. Um, well, well, can I stop you right here? Can I stop you right here? Yeah. Look, I don't want to dick around. I don't want to dance around it. It's on the game of the year nomination. No, you list, fucker! Without you fucker. a doubt. No, 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 no fucking no. doubt. Well, well, here, here, the next sentence out of my mouth. It, Let well, me my, add my a game for I was, once in my life. I, I was trying to be very polite and ask you guys before. Like, you're probably obviously going to oh talk my. about it more. Is this a game? I don't know how you feel about Breath of the Wild 2, which is everybody's like, oh, this is game of the year, or whatever. Even though we just made the same game, but better. Um, which is no problem. But is is this is this legit a game of the year threat? Or is it too niche? Yes. Yeah. I think it is. Okay. I think it is. It's I think it's the underdog though. I think it's my game of the year right now. Okay. I think Yeah. I will say I will say I think it's the underdog, not just for Subpixel, but I think in general, if you put them up against each other, I think it's a, the argument for Baldur's Gate 3 is a little bit harder. But it is definitely in the number one contention slot more than any other game besides Tears of the Kingdom. Well, I don't I don't even know what my other ones are from there's, there's a lot this year there is so, but i the problem is i don't know if they're legitimate like you know yeah, like you yeah, could yeah. say like this is an option but is it legitimately gonna have a chance you know so there's re4 there's final fantasy 16 there's um the system shock remake there's i'm not even naming stuff on our Star, list there's, starfield there's, comes out for example oh, starfield's yeah, coming armored core six Elden stuff Ring after that as well last year it was last year. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got so excited. I was like, it came out this year. Oh, it was last year. Yeah, it's Hit a crazy year. It's a it's a packed year. This is this is one of the greats. It really is. It's a great year for gaming. Anyways, I, I'm gonna. Anyways, that's, that's Baldur's Gate three. Let's go to the news. Uh, yeah, Ian's been more. muted for a bit. Kidding. I was thinking Ian, we should add this to the list <laughs> of the game of the year. <laughs> you, you guys can you guys can talk about it more if you want. Or like what no, makes it so? Like, we're gonna talk about it. About it. At, we're gonna talk well, about it. Well, as a D and D player, like I love D and D. I did. I couldn't get into the other one. I was like that, which came out on Steam. Uh, Divinity Original Sin. Divinity. Yeah. I was like, I can't really get into it. I'm already in two different campaigns. Um, is so that I, something I that had, matters? Or? I, so I had something similar. I played an hour or two of Divinity Original Sin 2, and I bounced off of it. And oh. it's it's funny because part of the reason I watched up why I bounced off Divinity Original Sin 2 was I wasn't super crazy about the combat and the camera controls. And it's pretty similar in Baldur's Gate 3, but I, I talked about this last week. I think something that it really has going for it is it's Dungeons and Dragons. So it's throwing a lot of stuff at you initially, but immediately you're like, uh, you know, oh, that's Magic Missile. Oh, that's Mage Hand. I know what that is. I already know what advantage is. I already know what inspiration is. I already know what a stat block looks like, etc. So it is it is D and D through and through, and that makes it easier to get into. And they have made some improvements on top of Divinity Original Sin. I've I've been told. So I just because you bounced off original sin definitely give this a shot i don't know if it's actually better because i didn't play both but i did not bounce off of this one i, I played about 20 hours of divinity original sin and or two and i don't remember a single thing about it and i just remember falling off of it so i think mm -hmm. i'm 20 hours doing... this does that not make the game good if you played 20 hours no, that's a, i guess that's a you know I, another I sh talk but point, it was but... 20 hours but i wasn't very far into the game Okay. Like, I'm 30 hours into Baldur's Gate, and I just entered Act 2. And it sounds like you weren't super invested in Divinity. Yeah, I, and I wasn't talking to people. I was just, like, I think it's more like 18 hours. Um, I will say the nice thing about it also being d d is it's kind of the d d do-whatever-you-want goes. So, like, oh, do you want to fill a satchel with explosives, throw the satchel at an enemy, and then shoot it with a firebolt and do ungodly amounts of damage that break the game, go for it. Do you want to stack 108 crates and climb over the wall into Baldur's Gate? Go for it. Um, there's all those sorts of things, and and that just doesn't, doesn't just apply to, like, the game mechanics. It also applies to, like, talking to people. 
Like, there's so yeah. many options when you're talking to people for doing things. It shows all of, like, you can do deception, per uh, perception. Since I'm a wizard, anytime anything arcane comes up, I can do a wizard check or an arcane check or just add an extra flavor of something. There's just so much extra stuff added that you would do in D&D &D that uh, it just already knows to do. The other nice thing, which is a pain in D&D, &D, is rolling perception checks uh the game just yeah. passively rolls perception checks when you walk past secrets when you walk past traps when you walk past this or that okay. it does insight checks uh like seeing if you can see if someone's lying when you first talk to them and it doesn't the other nice thing is it doesn't change the conversation like i talked to a lady today my insight check passed and it said you can tell she's toying with you but I can't, as a, my character, I can't just say, you're toying with me. I can still kind of go through the conversation and just understand she's being a jerk and is toying with yeah. me. Like, I, she's not taking anything seriously. And it turns out, the money I paid her to talk to some prisoners, she said, F you, you can't talk to prisoners and you just gave me 30 gold. And I was just like, what? 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 <laughs> uh, I should have listened to my insight check and not have given her yeah. 30 gold. Um... On the whole D&D yeah. &D thing, I think I, I think the other thing it does really well that fits with D&D &D tabletop play, or I should say a good tabletop play of D&D, &D, is that particular brand of humor. I'm sure you guys have seen the clip of, like, people coming across a squirrel in the road and they, like, the squirrel tries to bite them and then they're just like, you know, you can walk away from the squirrel, you can try and be nice from the squirrel, and one of the options is, like, kick the squirrel. And if you choose kick the squirrel, the squirrel just... You literally just fucking punt that squirrel into a tree and it explodes in blood. And it's like, that's D&D humor. I had a moment where I was uh, just running around out in the wilderness and I come across these goblins who are standing outside a windmill and they're just kind of like laughing. And there's a gnome tied to the windmill and the windmill is going. So the gnome's screaming and I talked to the goblins and I had a couple options. I could have been like, you know, leave the gnome alone. I could have been like, I'm going to fight you. I could have been like, do whatever you want, etc. Um, I ended up fighting them and I kill them and I go to, to get the gnome and I go into the windmill and there's two buttons side by side and one is break lever and the other one is release break lever. And I click and I click release break lever <laughs> and then I was like, wait a minute and then it goes to a cutscene, and the cutscene shows the windmill going faster and then it's a it's a wide shot and you just see the gnome fucking yeet off the windmill into the distance and it's just like Whoa! and then it's just like quest complete <laughs> and i was like oh fuck and i like literally was like can i go back and then i was like no that's perfect that's fucking D, &D humor right there is that you end up in a situation you make a mistake and the dm's like well you just fucking yeeted them into the distance <laughs> and it's like oh that's that's very funny and and the game the crazy thing is like it's not so much that the game is a cat the great thing about D, D on the tabletop is that because all the players are players and the runners of the game and you have the dm you can do pretty much fucking anything especially if you start bending the rules like crazy right baldur's gate 3 is not doing that it's not letting you do anything you want but it's letting you do just enough and then it's also delivering you a whole lot of tone to trick you into thinking you can make that you can do anything like that gnome situation there was maybe five possible outcomes they gave me like like fight join the goblins uh, leave, save the gnome, accidentally yeet the gnome into the distance, right? It's a limited number of options. I had a limited number of things, but I did not feel that way through that entire scenario. And it's because of how they presented it. And that's what makes it such a great fucking D&D &D game is that it gives you that tabletop feeling of you can do anything and anything can happen, but in a way that doesn't break the game or make it too wide open or make it, you know, buggy as fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I came across that. I'm pretty sure they highlight the... I mean, the the break release lever is closer to you than the other lever. So I'm pretty sure you just read break and you're like, oh, let me go do that. Because um, the same yeah. thing happened to me. I did reload it, though, because I wanted to go <laughs> talk to him afterwards. I, I, did, um, I didn't have one close enough, so I was just like... Yeah, I just... Oh, well. well, the nice thing, that situation, those goblins, I noticed... Um, and we'll talk about difficulty in a second, but I've been fighting them... And um, I 
I had been losing, and I was, like, trying to figure it out, and then I was finally fighting them on the last time, and, like, three of my party died, and then I hit the main guy pretty well, and he goes, oh, stop, stop, I'll leave. Oh. And, like, don't do anything, and I was like, what? So I mean, I reloaded, I was like, I don't want to pay for all these people, so I, I've been, I've saved scum only fights. Like, if I'm losing badly and stuff like that. Like, if my party wipes yeah. and everything. Because you have to, obviously. You're not going to walk away from the game. But, um, so I go back and I just enter the zone. I have all my characters fire at that one guy. He goes, wait, wait. And then I'm like, oh, give me all your stuff. And he gives me all the stuff and they all walk away in that situation. And I was like, perfect. Like, it, it's fantastic yeah. that that is an option there. Um... And there's another time when you have uh, more of a boss fight that I could not beat. I tried it three or four times and I actually walked away for a little bit. And when I came back, I I noticed when I was answering a certain question in like the run up to the fight, it would show one character I knew and it showed the other character I didn't know. And I was like, who is this guy? So I finally like before the fight went and walked around. And I finally found him. And there's like five or there's one two three four five factions in the fight that you are fighting okay. four uh -huh. of them or three of them are aligned normally and the other like and one of them's like slaves and then you and so in the base fight you could actually get three two of them to fight uh, two of them plus you to fight the other one and it still wasn't working for me and then finally I found that fourth guy and he let me convince more people to fight on my side. So we ended up having an even amount of fight. And there's like 15 guys in the fight. And so we ended up having an even amount of people to fight the entire fight and, and like take this guy down. And it was interesting because you were just like, who do you were more thinking about? Like, who are people's allegiances here? And how do I like answer questions to yeah. properly get people on my side? And I thought that I was think, really fun that they did that. Yeah, and I think I think that's one of the key things is just kind of going back to what I said, like this game is not that complicated. It's not an endless series of branching paths, etc. But I think what they do very well is that every single path in every single dialogue with every single character, and that's only a slight exaggeration, is viable and interesting and will actually have some payoff some way i have lost two eyes so far in my party in this game in this playthrough and it's because i'll start talking to people and they'll be like hey i can try something and i'm like let's see where this fucking goes you know and then they just keep going with it and i'm like before i know it i've lost a fucking eye and i'm like well, shit <laughs> you know sometimes it's helpful sometimes it's not but it's it's every single person you talk to is not even just a fucking storekeep is not just one dimensional like they will have aspects to them and even if they don't necessarily have branching dialogue paths leading to a whole bunch of different options they will at least be a very interesting well thought out character there's this one gnome uh storekeep in emerald grove that is the most beautiful npc i've ever seen like he's not a gorgeous person but he just has such a cool character and he has a cool voice actor and he looks so good and his stubble looks incredible that every time I go to him, I'm just like, hell yeah, this is a fucking video game, folks. And he's just a fucking storekeep like like it's the, the amount of thought and let me back up a little bit. Let me come at it a different way. I've always hated games that have too much writing in them. Uh, and to an extent, even games that have too much cutscene and too much dialogue because it's like, fuck the story, get me to the gameplay. There are rare exceptions to that. Pentiment last year was an exception to that. This is another exception. And I'm starting to think maybe my problem isn't with the fact that the game has a lot of writing. It's that the writing in video games is subpar. And then I play something like Pentiment that is 99% writing. I play something like Baldur's Gate, which has a lot of writing and dialogue choices in it. And I'm fucking paying attention to every goddamn line 20 hours into the game when I would normally stop that two hours into a game. And it's because of how well written all these characters and all these options are. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of wild. Like, the, some of the best written characters in a video game, I... I almost feel like i'm in a committed relationship with the 
with a get the Yankee fighter, like to the point where it's just like Yankee, got Yankee, is it? It just to the point where she's just like, I I like went to, uh, we had we had some relations and then I went to bed again, and I woke up and she had a knife over me and she said, "Get out of my mind!" And I was like, "What?" She goes, "Every time I try to clear my mind, you walk back into it." I'm like. Listen, lady. Yo, that's, she's like, abu- that's, that's too much. She's like, that's you gotta because... prove yourself to me. And I was like, Will, oh, that... what? Will, that's because you rolled a 20 in performance yeah. in fucking bed. She was like, you gotta prove yourself Jeez. to me. And I was like, oh, like, do we just fight in combat? Like, like get covered in blood together while fighting others? She goes, no, you gotta fucking fight me. And I was like, what? <gasps> and so then we oh were fighting God. each other. And I was like, oh, oh this is easy. God. I'm just going to misty step away from you. And then I forgot Guthy Yankees have misty step as a, as a racial <laughs> trait. So she like, I hit her once, misty step away. Then she misty steps to me, hits me three times. And I was like, oh, no. And then level three thunder weave, push her away. And she hits the ground. Oh and then she God. kissed me afterwards because I won. Um, so, so, wow. so just as an Go example, well. I have not, I have not experienced any of that. Because I'm not romancing that character. And so it's like, it, it's a perfect example of any which way you go, you will find depth of story and character and dialogue and choices and unique experiences like fighting your lover to prove your love to them. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. That's and I wild. don't take her on missions because I'm afraid something might happen to her. So Wait, can people die permanently? People die no, you can, uh, you can raise them think so. with Withers, uh, who's the creepy old skull guy. Well, you can. Can't you just res them with re, the revivify skull? Uh, Not scroll? if they die. Like if they lose their saving throws, you have to res them. I've, I've revived. I've revived people like that. Really? Yeah, because because they go down, and then when they're dead, dead, their character goes gray, and they get the skull and everything, and they don't even have saving throws anymore. Yeah, I've done revivify. On oh, them. I never thought. To, I just paid. so it's it's actually. It's it's much. That's the one thing that's different from from D and D is it's much much easier. If somebody goes down, I've got fucking like ten scrolls of revivify that I've just found, and I just like poop pop yeah. them back up. Um, I have one character, one of my NPC characters who's bugged. Uh, he's just at my camp hanging out. I still have to complete his quest, which I completed about fifteen hours ago. Uh, and it's still actually I. <laughs> so. It's having me, so this is all the way from some quest. It wants me to talk to a character from Emerald Grove, and that character has since left. And uh? those, some of those characters show back up again later in the game, and they specifically tell me that the character I still need to talk to from 15 hours ago died. So he's dead, and I find his body in the wild like where they were ambushed i'm like oh my god his body's here like Mm. and so i cast speak with dead and he like raises up and everything and it says this 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 person this dead person has nothing to say to you and i was like damn it damn it let me complete this quest (laughs) so every time there's a hot fix i go to the druid in my camp to see if to see if he'll uh reset right now it's just i can just tell him oh i'm glad you're hanging out in the camp with me um, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Don't talk to my like, wife, by the way. Yeah, don't talk yeah. to her. Uh, which is super annoying. I have another. It's minor. My uh, one of my other characters, Will, uh, who is a great character. Um, his story is off the rails. Um, he um, he just has a quest marker over his head forever. Uh, I think I was supposed to talk to him about something, but now it just there's no dialogue. That's options. weird. I haven't had any major issues at all. Like the only stuff I've had is sometimes in combat, it'll get stuck on like uh, an enemy's turn for like 15 seconds. Like it'll I'll just sit there that. thinking. I think the computer's Other than thinking. that, I've had no issues. I've had the computer yeah. think for a bit and it's just like, mm, and then it just dashes so real quick, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So real quick, let's do, let's do a check-in. Who's in your party? Who's your usual takeout? Uh, I have Will... Carlac, Carlac, is that how you say it? Yeah, name? I have Will Carlac and uh, Astarian. Astarian, wow, Astarian. So completely different from what I've got because I got rid of Astarian because he's a fucking creepo vampire that tried to kill me. Um, and then I have, I have Gale because he's my husband. He doesn't know it yet, but I'm romancing him. Uh, I have Gale's. Gale's a wizard. He he's kind of cool. You? 
<laughs> no, we had a very touching moment, but then it cut us off. I thought uh, when he, he, well, he tells you about his condition, and yes, I and thought he, he was coming God. out to me. <laughs> oh. oh, I was like already, oh. and then it cuts yeah. to the other thing, and I was like, oh, oh. So I have Gale. I have Shadow Heart, just because oh. she's pretty good cleric. I don't like her as a character, but. I've already got her leveled up as a cleric and everything. I, and then I have Lizzo. Lizzo's like my tank. I've got her fully oh, kitted out and everything. She's great. My wife. My new wife. Yeah. <laughs> my video game wife. Um, so where where are you at? I am deep in the Shadowlands, my friend. Deep in the Shadowlands. Uh, the Shadowlands. The Shadowlands is... Did you did you go in the... Because there's a point where they say go under dark or through so the mountains. So I did all of the under dark. Okay. Uh, and then I did a bit of the mountain pass. <clears throat> There's a whole Guth Yankee thing yeah. that I did half of it. I did the second half, or not the second half. I did half of it. I did another 5% of it. And I said, I made some decisions that I was like, I don't want to go down this route because I just yeah. want to see what it was. And then I backed up to the 50% mark. And then I just left the mountain region uh, because I'm, I had leveled up high enough to go to the next area. So I'm, I'm, have you, you, Moonrise Towers? I, I am at the, what I think is the end of the, of the Underdark, where you click on an elevator and it goes, are you sure you want to continue? That's, yeah. I literally just hit that. And I'm like level, I think I've got everybody at level five now. And you, you got rid of the true soul guy down there and everything. No, not yet. I just clicked on the elevator. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot in the Underdark. Um, like there was a whole mushroom quest line that I didn't realize. Yeah, that was cool. That was good um, stuff. Yeah. Well, so the problem is I keep, I friend everyone. I don't like, I convince everyone to be friends with me. Like all of the people in the Underdark yeah. were all friends with me, except for the monsters, obviously. And then like, I'll turn on them as the other ones want me to fight fuck, them. Fuck the monsters for trying to be like friendly. <laughs> well you can't be friends. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess you can swear. Yeah. Yeah, you can't be well. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do the exact same thing. I'm like, what does everybody want from me? What can you give me? And then I parlay that into who's dying yeah. to get me what I want. Yeah. Uh, just as an aside, I thought this was crazy. One of my coworkers uh used Featherfall in one of the chasms just on the surface and ended up in the underdark. So the fact that it what? connects is so. He said oh, he said he it's jumped just off. Like Tears of the Kingdom. He jumped yeah. off. He feather fell, landed. The rest of his teammates just hit the ground. Died because <laughs> they just followed you, yeah. fucking idiots. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, yeah, so I'm in the Shadowlands. So at some point, you'll it'll tell you you have to get to the Moonrise Tower, Rise Moonrise Towers, or whatever they are. So I yeah, I, I'm, the I went there yeah. and I've been doing a couple things, and now it has sent me to the next spot in that underground area um, to go to. So I got gotcha. you. Um, <clears throat> it's super fun. I met another character down there, um, who I I am excited for you to meet. I talked my way out of the the peril with him by convincing him there was no point in being here anymore and he just goes it's <laughs> <laughs> just like, it's just like <laughs> what? oh it's incredible um so whenever oh, you get boy. to that it'll be exciting i'm excited but, um uh i think that's all Game's my notes great. yeah it's Game's fantastic great. fantastic video game um oh i'm just loving it so much and and sorry the other thing i was going to say is other than my new video game wife um the other characters they're just so much fun to talk to and just like yeah figure things out and asterian uh i don't like him that much i like him as a character more than i like him as a person which is really weird to say because i'm considering him a person in this game um yeah and but his he's uh, just having a rogue is great because he can just hide i i found um invisibility clothing so he wears that, oh. so he can go invisible whenever he can hide all the time. Like he's super high, and his That's um, so broken. Yeah, his lock picking and disarming is plus nine. So I pretty much always unlock. So, everything. so the crazy thing is, I went I went bard, right? My stealth is plus twelve. My lock picking is plus nine. It's Damn. like like the thing about the bard, and I'm glad I read that article about this. Is that with the bard, I basically get all of the fucking rogue stuff out of combat yeah, jack of all trades yeah yeah and then and then in combat i'm still pretty good like i have double hand crossbows 
So because of that, it gives me a, it gives me basically two attacks, and one of them uh. sets people on fire. Um, and then I have a whole bunch of spells and stuff that I'm casting as buffs and debuffs. So it's it's it game's really fucking good. If yeah. you like if you like D and D, if you like games with great stories, if you like games where you're building characters, if you like turn based games, if you like video games, play Baldur's Gate three. It's fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely this excellent. game, this game won't win Game of the Year because Zelda came out though. Probably, is that still is that a fair statement to make? Can I you refute that statement. I mean, this... I think it will win. I think. Uh, let me put it this way. Okay. Elden Ring swept last year. I don't think Tears of the Kingdom will do that well this year. Okay. It will still yeah. win more, but it will not win nearly as many. But also, like Baldur's Gate peaked at what eight hundred thousand people playing it on steam it was 26 percent of people playing steam this weekend were playing baldur's gate 3 yeah 26 percent. That, that's nuts if you think about it that's, that's wild just, that's so that's a lot of people playing it yeah um yeah i think my you, entire you can, friends you list. can play with your, you can play with your friends though right or no is it only a single player you can you can it's a it's a little weird so the way i understand it is you can either hop into somebody else's game in which case you can't bring your character you pick one of their like pre-built characters and you don't get any progress but you're playing with them while they're playing through the campaign mm. or you can start a multiplayer only campaign which is the same exact campaign but it's only played in multiplayer and you can have up to four people join in with their custom character so basically it's a virtual D D campaign okay. so it's 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 not the perfect solution the perfect solution is you both bring custom characters and you you you're you're both contributing to your save files. They don't have that option, but you could still play it. I, I, we, we should probably play it for a stream at some point just to have some fun, because from what I've heard, it's co-op, but it's not limited at all. Like you could be in completely different fucking parts of the map talking to people doing whatever you want, and it's not going to like restrict you to the same screen or the same encounter. But does it does it like if I talk to someone a bunch and then you talk to them, does it treat us as two different people? Like, if you make enemies with someone, are they enemies with me? That's what I wonder. Pro probably because yeah. I had a similar situation in my single player campaign where one person was spotted by guards. And so, therefore, anytime they got spotted, the whole party went to combat. Gotcha. Um, I will also say this game would be incredible if they eventually add, like, a scenario maker or something yeah like i could easily see myself playing D D and setting up a little dungeon that everyone on in my campaign is just in the game and we can do combat and stuff that way and i'm still like kind of yeah. telling the story and playing every npc like i could see that being the way to play yeah. D D. um like like a stripped down version where it's just combat encounters take place within the game yeah but outside of combat encounters we're just doing the normal yeah Face to face D and D, yeah, and like you could get to the point where, like, even if people could put out their own little campaigns, I mean, honestly, use AI voicing for that, but but obviously mm -hmm. with approval of certain things and everything. Um, but Baldur's Gate three, go play it; it's incredible. It's a time machine of a video game. You blink, and it's it's Monday morning. Um, it's moving up. on. Sorry. Can I, real quick, can my PC run that with a graphics card that's like in the 1000s or whatever the fuck it is? You know, probably. Probably. I would say it if it's a 1080, it probably could. It's 1080, yeah, it's 1080. Oh, yeah. I think you would be fine on the 1080. Okay. Um, it is coming out on consoles, though. Actually, I'm not sure if it, is it, is it coming out on Xbox? I know it's coming out on PS5. It's PS5 and the Xbox is like later. I think was the whole like oh that's right because th they were the studio that said we're having problems with the series s yeah it's because they have to do pa yeah parody with the series s uh which is, the which most is a bullshit thing. that's a that's a bullshit argument <laughs> i just hate the series s is people have to do that. it's not that but it's not that slow of a console it's just running at 1440p that's it no 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 i get that but like the fact that you can't do things that only the x can do is annoying for like video games. no i think that's i think that's smart for microsoft because if it was the other way fuck that could no. you imagine being oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. i have a series no. s i can't play that game if it was the other yeah. I, i'm talking in a scenario where the s doesn't exist like it's just the s okay like, gotcha, gotcha. Just the gotcha. Yeah, yeah. no the way it is now because the s exists yes yeah, um okay moving on to the news do we have news we have news we can talk about news yeah we got some stuff here 
I'll hit the uh, have you guys? I think I put all three things in here. Uh, any of you guys have a chance to look at these news stories? No. No. I mean, I know some of them. Okay, well, let's do this. Uh, you guys pick which story you want to talk about, and uh, I'll give you the quick rundown, and we can discuss it. Give me, give me the Twitch. I'm on Twitch. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, this week, uh, Kai Sanat, who's a very popular Twitch streamer, oh. basically did a giveaway last Friday afternoon yeah. uh, at 4 p.m. in Union Square. And he basically said, hey, show up here in New York City, Union Square. I'm going to give away a bunch of free PlayStation consoles and gift cards. And it turned into a fucking riot, like literally yeah. thousands of people like like fights, climbing on top of cars, punching out windows. The, the, the police had to I forget what they said, but the police have this like response level that is a thousand cops or more need to come to this location. And that's what they had to call out. Uh, a lot of people got arrested, including the streamer. This is uh, a very, very stupid thing. It's wild, right? Have you guys you guys seen the images and video from this? It's so popular my, my parents heard about it. That's how you know it's oh, it's just wow. hitting the normal lexicon of like what happened. She's like, Did you hear about yeah. the this Twitch guy? You're not doing that, are you? I'm like, No, I'm not. I'm streaming to like ten people, thank you. Fuck. I would love to though. Like genuinely, <laughs> if I did this, I would regret it, but I would also be like, Fuck, I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> I'll make sure to quote you on that. Uh, you know what? I'll use thank that you. as an exact quote. Ian, giving out PlayStation 4s, I'm cool. There you go. Okay, PS4s. Oh, I can't afford 5s. I can't afford 5s. I can't afford 5s. <laughs> okay. There's the PS1 classics. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Cross yeah. his arms. <laughs> like, this is, this is the perfect example of, like, I'm internet cool, and then you meet, like, real-world reality, but in a, in a weird way, because normally it's I'm internet cool and nobody gives a shit and nobody knows who you are. But this is, I'm internet cool. I have a shitload of people who know who I am. So I'm just going to do something. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, fuck, there's real world consequences to this that I didn't even think about. Um, and it's just it's a little worrisome. This is the new cult of celebrities. Twitch streamers are getting more and more famous, more and more popular. And uh, it turns out they don't have the same fucking media training common sense as it, normal celebrities it, well, it's not just so this goes beyond twitch streaming if i can even add more yeah. like this is this is only fans these are instagram mm -hmm. models these TikTok. are like tiktokers like they don't have they they're like they'll tiktok i'm at a funeral and i i have a tiktok I'm like what are you fucking doing dude Gr like you're at a funeral talk. yeah like right in front of the exactly, coffin yeah. or something like but it it just Coffin's goes to show off. you that they they don't have like ian said they don't have that like social interaction like they're they're like picture like how we interact on discord that's their main mode of communication rather than like yeah. a, a, in, in real life uh like just a tree that they learned or like through schooling or something like that that mm. is their way of doing it now they didn't have the original i'm gonna go up and talk to this person yeah so they and they're and they're expected they're expected to react that way. Like their whole content is based around them being on and being a Twitch person, being a TikToker, being an OnlyFans persona all the time. And so then they go out in public and they act like that. And it's just like, no, 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 no. Everything that they That's do is not content appropriate. Now. That's the thing. Exactly. They, they, it's a social yeah. media post. It's content. I was in, even when I was in other countries, they would when they're spending time with their couple and getting pictures and stuff, you, you would think it'd be like nice just to spend time with their couple. No, they have like <laughs> the, the pics, like the selfie sticks. There was a guy who would like, br they brought a step ladder to a park oh to get the God. best, the best photo of them pulling off. Like the, like, uh, well, it was spirit, like the blossoms, the blossoms were blooming. Right oh, the cherry moment. blossoms. Cherry blossoms. Yeah. And I'm like, you're bringing a step ladder to a park, like on probably like your date with them on a Saturday. Just to get like nice pictures. This is where we're at in life. It's <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's messed up. It's one of those things that makes me regret being in this Twitch YouTube scene because we we handle ourselves fairly well. Um, and <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> yeah. I, compared to most people, I compared know. to all the fucking famous people, and it's just like I don't want to be associated with those fuckers. You know. 
but they're we're not, so we're content good. creators like us. I, well i have to explain <laughs> it whenever i go to like a family party i have to explain I, oh, my cousin just followed me on like twitch i have to explain that yeah. like it's not we're not i'm not a big deal or anything like you hear about all this stuff now and you're probably scared but like, yeah i'm different than this guy giving out playstations or you know like a normal like tiktoker who's got like a thousand whatever they're they're more caring about the button presses than the actual person themselves they're like i got this much traffic to yeah. my channel like okay cool, or the dude. or the quality of their content you yeah know, they just yeah. don't care they're just yeah. chasing it so you should give away yeah. PS5s, Ian, at, at the Retro Expo. PlayStation 4s, guys. PlayStation, PlayStation 4s. Fours. You know, honestly, I, I don't I don't fault him. And you guys remember when there was that whole scandal with the guy at, was it IGN or GameSpot, where they found out, like, all of his shit was plagiarized? Remember oh, that, like, IGN, three or four years ago? The Nintendo guy? Yeah. Well, I just remember people were like, well, how did he get that job? And they're like, well, he had a YouTube channel and the YouTube channel was was popular and he made videos on there. And somebody made the derogatory comment. They were like, well, he only had that many YouTube subscribers because he did a Nintendo Switch giveaway when the Nintendo Switch was released. And it was like a subscribe to enter the giveaway. And I was like, so fucking what? <laughs> like, if that's the worst that he's done to build his YouTube channel is do a giveaway like the plagiarism is inexcusable. But like, don't fault somebody for doing a giveaway and trying and that's not the problem with this the problem is that they basically had thousands of fans they put them in public in a terrible situation that they had no control no planning no foresight for more no forethought for and it was just a very unsafe situation so hey giveaway shit we can do giveaways i i no we've never done a giveaway we came close um Joey? It's just a Joey's fuck situation. Um, yeah, Philip Mewson, what's his name? Um, yeah, that's the guy. 2018, that was. He hasn't tweeted since 2021, and he hasn't had a video in over a year. So, uh, yeah, oh, I remember right, yeah, that. Because he tried to wild. come back. Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, compared to a lot of other people who used to be in the video game industry and are now ousted, uh, he didn't. He didn't plagiarism's any, not that play, bad. <laughs> yeah, play, I was gonna say plagiarism's not that yeah. bad. It wasn't like the rooster teeth stuff or anything. So it's like <laughs> okay, but also I don't. I just understand how you can get. I I will forgive probably accidental plagiarism, but uh, the level of his plagiarism. It's just like how do you sleep at night like knowing you're actively copying someone? Well, it's, 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 it's also it's laziness too. It's oh, laziness that too. Yeah. It's it's just like how you either have to be very, very ballsy and confident that no one will ever catch you or you have to be very, very stupid. Because the other thing is with almost any other any plagiarism, as soon as somebody starts digging, it's like, oh, shit, all I had to do was Google this sentence. And it's the first fucking result. It's what you plagiarized from. Yeah. Like plagiarists never hide their shit well. And it's wild. It's like today I was recording VO and I like. I was like, oh, wait, shit. Like, did I write this? Or is this the Wikipedia thing I just copied? Like, and I forgot to, like, yeah. call it out as Wikipedia. And so I had to, like, go triple check. I was like, no, okay, I did write this. Uh, it's, it's okay. To, like, I don't have to attribute. Um, yeah, that's wild. Um, do you want to talk about uh, the patents, Ian? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised this isn't all over the fucking news. Uh, Nintendo is pulling a fast one, being a bunch of fucking dicks. Uh, they have registered multiple patents related to The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, one of the patents is for the lightning ability that one of the uh, fucking time guardians, whatever them losers are called. Uh, one of them is for if you stand on a vehicle, then you move with the vehicle. <laughs> like they're they're literally uh, one of them is about. uh preventing you from grabbing and manipulating an object with ultra hand that you are already on top of. So it's stuff that is already in other video games and now they are coming through and patenting to them. Yeah. If you, if you check the fucking, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm just reading through this. It's just funny. You, gotta, <laughs> you went gotta very... totally quiet. 
I'm sorry, I'm reading this. Okay, the patent is a solution to providing, quote, a game processing method capable of enriching game presentation during a waiting period in which at least a part of the game processing is interrupted and consists of filling up the loading period that ensues after the user inputs their fast travel destination with a sequence in which an image of the starting points map transitions into a map of the destination. So, like, they're literally fucking patenting the fast travel map loading screen transition. Like, this is fucked. But period. I don't understand what, why? Because okay. they can. Hold on. But don't is it so other it. people can't do it or so people pay them don't, to yes. do it? Yes. Yeah. Both. That's what, that's the whole point of a patent. You either prevent people from doing it or you make them pay uh, licensing fees. And, and kind of the, 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 the Mexican standoff of the video game industry has always been, we're not going to patent this shit because we encourage the industry to iterate off of each other's ideas. And if we start patenting fucking video game mechanics, it's going to be fucking, it's, it's anti-capitalist. It's anti-consumer. It's anti-competitive. It's just fucked. If people can start patenting all this random shit, this is fucked. They put in a whole lot of patents for basic fucking video game shit. Yeah, this is wild. Never, first of all, Will, you made the classic mistake of questioning why Nintendo did anything. <laughs> True. <laughs> like, ban all their music on YouTube from listening to their music, which was great. I love that. Or, you know, make games that are, you know, only Japan only and then get mad when people ROM, ha like, ROM to get them. Like, okay, bro, like, good shit, dude. People want to play your games. Maybe you should release them internationally. Who who had the patent for was it Sony had or someone had the patent for playing games during loading screens? Oh, I think that was you're talking about I think you're talking about with Sony and where yeah, it was you Ridge had to Racer interact had with the it. screen. You had to interact with the screen to be like swipe away the hamburger and you would like swipe yeah, it. <laughs> but I, I was watching old Giant Bomb videos and he was playing Ridge Racer two or something and you play galaga during the loading screen or asteroids or something so i think yeah. i think that was like one of the things like playing games in loading screen. but that's this is i'm glad you brought this to my attention this is it's stupid it's fucked. stupid um well that's gonna be the news uh before we get out for the week we've got to talk about the wish oh take that again before we get out of here for the week, we got to talk about the wish list spotlight for this week. This week's game, chosen by moi, is a video game called In World Origins. In World Origins, as I understand it, is a investigative game where you are a detective and you go around and talk to witnesses and you're trying to figure out a mystery and solve a case. All of the witnesses and people that you are talking to are like chat GPT AI generated responses, voices, um, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I watched huh. uh, a couple people play it. There is a demo available for free on Steam right now. Um, mm. The favorite thing I have heard come out of this is one person was saying they wouldn't talk to a, uh, one of the witnesses who said, oh, I can show you where it is. And they said, okay, follow me. And then it proceeded the NPC realizing they were just an AI voice and that they couldn't actually move. And so they had a mental breakdown. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm reading the reviews. You, you talk to the people. Yeah. Through your microphone. Yeah. That sounds wild okay. as shit. That's that adds crazy. an element. I only know that because there's a lot of negative reviews in here being like, the game doesn't understand my accent, even though I'm speaking <laughs> English. <laughs> um, yeah, the, I, I think it's one of these reviews that said, he said, sure, follow me. Led her to the realization that she was simply an AI without legs. I tried to calm her, but she spiraled into a full-blown <laughs> existential crisis. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> we should probably play this. This sounds Incredible. like AI dungeon. It um, sounds great. So I just think it sounds really funny uh, and I want to try it and we'll stream it. But yeah, just like an AI being like, what do you mean I can't move? Why, why can't I walk? Where are my yeah. children? If, if I can real quick, um, I just want to brush aside all the ethical moral dilemmas with, with AI machine learning, etc. Oh. Let's oh. just ignore that for a second. 
I think this is where the cool shit is coming in. I, I saw a TikTok of this guy who was like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to write a little program that ties in my webcam with uh, image recognition with chat GPT and 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 uh, my voice and Google Labs voice recognition. And he wrote this little program. And at the end of it, he was able to like, you know, they showed the view from the webcam and he held it up like he held up a banana and he's like, what is this? And it's like, that is a banana. And he goes and he's like, where is this grown? And it's like going back and forth answers like he's literally talking to the computer, getting dynamic answers based on things that he's presenting to it and asking from it. And that's I, that's where I think all this AI stuff is going to be super cool is where they kind of coalesce across multiple different mediums and platforms and knowledge bases. And this is a perfect example of what we literally just talked about how well written Baldur's Gate writing is. And that's fantastic. But what if we took all those shitty video games with shitty writing and we replaced it with semi decent AI answers and responses and shadows of doubt level of random procedurally generated with a little bit more AI backing like fuck the futures here folks it's gonna yeah. be great I mean, and and specifically for games that want to do that like that are trying to do yes that. for like yes, story based deliberate. games that are story like those are different but the Baldur's gate way of doing it uh and i also think it'd be neat in that sort of scenario editor version have a ai that has all the just the all the D, &D books and whatever information the dm types about their world and then yeah. those characters can use that. So then there's it's only using the content that is approved for that. Um, I think that. But even even in well. even in Baldur's Gate three, like when you fight when you fight enemies and you fight bosses, they have predetermined routines, right? They probably have a list of like, here's 15, 20 actions you can do. And you're not necessarily picking at them from random, but there are constraints upon them, etc. But what if you had an A.I. chat GPT esque and you like you said, you fed it the D&D rule books and then you said, OK, do you understand the rules? And it goes, yeah, I, I, you know, I understand them. I've at least parsed the rule book. And then you say, OK, here's your fucking character sheet. You're playing as this goblin guy. Here's where you are. Here's where the here's where the player characters are. What would you do in this situation? And so then it no longer feels like you're playing against a standard NPC character with a list of moves that it's pulling from. It's starting to react a lot more dynamically to the situation because it has the same understanding as you of, hey, in D&D, I can pick up this shoe and throw it at you, you know, all this sorts of stuff. So I think that's where even outside of like the straight dialogue character delivered speech, it could be a lot more dynamic based on the input you give it. Do you, yeah. Do you think people are going to solve Baldur's Gate pretty quickly? solve it yeah people i think people, i'm not, I'm I'm not saying people. it's wrong or right but people sometimes will get it and they're like this is my best class this is my best like ass oh. of the characters yeah i think they're already there D &D's yeah. already I think, min I think, maxed. true but yeah. i'm saying like do you think that'll be hopefully hopefully that doesn't become like the popular if you're talking about it like oh did you run this character like you didn't oh you didn't do this like you guys are like dumb no, I, well, I, th well, I, I think, think, think i think what makes Baldur's gate yeah what makes Baldur's Gate 3 so good is that my bard is kind of min max. Like I look up a bunch of stuff to build him, but that doesn't make him the best character because there's so many options in the game. There is no best character because that presumes there's a best solution and there's not. That's that's yeah. what's so cool about it. And the nice thing you can is min max in so many different directions that there is no max. Like the thing I learned and like like when, when I accidentally launched launched the gnome, I reloaded my save so I could talk to him. But I've since learned 50, 23 hours later that if I miss a little thing like that and it's not like it's not a party wipe or something like that, I can just keep going with my day. Like there's no yeah. point in reloading and being like, I need to get this sequence. Like a lot of times I'll get in a conversation with someone, it goes south and I go, yeah, I wouldn't actually pick that. But because I can save scum, I just wanted to see what the option did. And I'll go back, and then sometimes the optimal route was bad anyway, so you're just like, I'm still on the other end, side of the bridge. Doesn't matter how I got yeah. there. I can always long rest, so. Uh, there, there's some of that, because there's always that in D&D. &D. Uh, but I think it's going to be way less. This is the way. Uh, it'll probably be like, these are the 400 different ways you can play Baldur's Gate. But there, it won't be any less than that, you know. But I think the thing is, like, uh, one of the things I looked up early was I was like, hey, which which character should I be taking with me in battle? And I was like, look, rank the companions, right? There's like eight or 10 or 12 of them, I think. Every single list was different yeah. in terms of who the top five were. There was maybe one or two characters that were always in the top five. 
but you would literally have characters that would be in the 10, 11, 12 in a couple list, and then I go to a, diff- a couple other list, and they would be one, two, or three. So the game is so well built that I don't want to say it's not possible to min max, but there is not one, two, or three perfect solutions or the best solutions there's so many optimal ways to do it that to your question i don't think anybody can solve it because there's not a solution yeah like i like gale but i'm already a wizard i don't need another wizard with me so like yeah so he's your your camp husband yeah yeah he's my camp husband who's actually he's the worst and i hate him so (laughs) fuck you don't talk about my man like that it's okay you're good um folks that is gonna be the show this week um i'm gonna hit the button here which means we've got 60 seconds to end this show jason before i hit the button is there anything else you'd like to say on any uh, yeah, of the topics? Uh, whatever whatever well for topics and and other stuff in general i'm sorry i like for the input or lack of input sometimes i can give because i play a narrow range of games and i'm very expertise on those games so that's just how i roll i play the same game and sometimes i don't offer that much wide variety of things but i can offer input on hopefully one narrow it's all good i mean we're happy to have you here just play Baldur's gate 3 it's yeah. you would love it you actually you would probably it. would love it uh it is satisfied the time ta- oh and we never talked about difficulty ian i know you lowered yours which is a perfectly fine thing to do i i kept mine in the middle and it's been nice because i don't win every encounter on the first try but I can, like, the boss ones, I can do it three or four times and, like, be like, oh, uh-huh. this is what I need to do. This is what I want to do. And the nice thing is, it's not like Fire Emblem where every time it's going to be the same. Like, it's, like, I'll have, everyone's in the same position and six different things happen on six different loads. So Yeah, but I, honestly, I think, uh, I hate to keep this conversation going, but I think the problem with the difficulty isn't with the difficulty. It's one of the drawbacks of this being a D&D game is that in you have four players in your party, right? In this yeah. game, you play all four of them. In D and D, you only play one character, so you have four brains. You have four people sitting there thinking, knowing their single character, and you've got four brains working for four characters on the problem. In this, you're literally doing four times the work. Yeah. And I think I think that's the big downside with this being a D and D game is that it's full D and D, but that means you're doing four times the work. You're playing four different characters. You got to know four different things, etc. That yeah. I think that's where the difficulty I, comes in. I didn't think about that, but that makes a lot of sense. Um. And Jason, to your point, uh, I like you having, I, I like you having, I like having you on here because you always have great questions and you surprise me with your gotta, questions. Gotta ask um, questions, man. So uh, you, you'd I'd love to ask questions and you got the chocolate milk. No. Um, it's gone now. Yeah. I can't oh, make it all. God. Well, thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to hit the music folks. This has been what I like to call a podcast. We are Subpixel. We uh, Subpixelfilms.com will bring you straight to our link tree where you can go buy merch and you can visit all of our hot, hot places like Twitter and Twitch and Mixer and YouTube and Beam and Penguin and whatever else you want to go to. Uh, we will be back this weekend with some Hell Let Loose, I believe. Um, playing that me, Ian, and my brother will be playing that. Or we might check out this uh, AI demo. That'd be kind of fun. Um, Mm -hmm. Until then, uh, we will uh, see you all. uh, Yeah, so Pixel Team. Okay, bye. Oh, wait, the song's still not over. (laughs) I know you can't hear it. (laughs) I can hear it. Oh, you can hear it? Yeah, Sub Pixel Team. Sub Pixel Team. We'll see you all. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Bye.